Hi there everyone and welcome once again to the Train Aid HQ. My name is Nick and in today's video we are looking at the roles and responsibilities of a teacher. So if you're new to teaching or an experienced teacher we are going to look at the top 10 roles and also the top 10 responsibilities of a trainer uh, through um, a video guide and we're going to give you lots of help and advice uh, along the way if you're new to the channel um, please do like the video and subscribe um, to our uh, youtube page to get the latest alerts and updates from the team so welcome if you're new um, just a few things before we begin if you're new to teaching if you'd like to start a, a, perhaps a new career within teaching or training then please do get in contact we deliver the level three award in education and training the level four certificate and the level five diploma in education and training so please do get in contact with us um, we have uh, a range of different uh, learners and also career paths uh, on behalf of train aid and also high field qualifications but let's get into this video okay we have our top 10 roles and top 10 responsibilities of a teacher and i'm going to be going through each one and giving you lots of help and advice and in my opinion if you follow these these roles these responsibilities you will make an outstanding teacher OK, and let's get started with the, the top 10 roles of a teacher. In my opinion, I think the most important role of a teacher is your subject knowledge. You ideally need to be a specialist within your chosen field and you must be confident when delivering the content that you are teaching as well. So the, the key role of a teacher is to be a subject specialist and you should aim to inspire, to motivate and to encourage your learners to be very much the, the next generation of, of your career. OK, you should be proud of your subject specialism. And if you don't know, perhaps the answers um, within your subjects, because subjects do change all the time, is to be open to change and to really to find out the latest changes and updates within your uh, subject specialism. So you can provide the latest updates and advice as well. So you need to be open with changes within policies, uh, procedures, legislations within your field field so you're moving with the times as well and also a professional teacher um, should be open to attending cpd events perhaps inset days as well and you can really understand the latest uh, developments within your area as well so i think the key role of a teacher, in my opinion, is to be a subject specialist. You are proud uh, to teach your subject area. OK, you are a representative not only for your school, your organization, but your chosen career as well. OK, so subject knowledge is absolutely key. Now, many people ask me um, is how uh, how should you stay up to date uh, with your subject area okay well there are many ways that you can you can stay current first of all is to sign up to perhaps the awarding body websites or or newsletter so many awarding bodies have a perhaps a monthly um, newsletter which you receive the updates by email you can also attend uh, cpd events uh, inset days perhaps looking at different progression opportunities as well you could even perhaps host uh, some inset days yourself so you could actually teach your fellow teachers or staff members and you could uh, communicate the latest um, updates within your uh, your community your subject specialism as well but in terms of um, other key um, responsibilities, I think, of, of, a, of a teacher with regards to staying current is to plan your, your lessons effectively, um, try to keep up date and also to speak to your colleagues as well. You can also be observed by your, perhaps your colleagues um, and they could provide you with some feedback as well about your, your current teaching practice. So, you know, always be open to, to observations here. OK, so if you're perhaps observed, perhaps once a year, that's that's great. OK, 
um, and you could get some informal feedback from them. So always be open to change. Try to keep your uh, subject specialism, your knowledge current and be open to change. Okay, Be open to uh, to criticism. OK, constructive criticism, perhaps from colleagues or an observer as well. So that, I think, is absolutely key. Just moving on to another uh, favorite uh, role of mine is to be a motivator. You have to be um, enthusiastic, passionate about your subject specialism, and this is going to help to engage, to inspire your, your learners to strive towards uh, their desire desired goal or qualification so what they are striving towards so a motivator is someone who is a positive figure who provides praise support and this is going to create and help foster a positive uh, teaching and learning atmosphere as well where learners feel confident to ask you perhaps questions about their their work and how to improve so if you are uh, providing praise, support, you have a smile on your face, it's those small things that is going to really do wonders with creating this um, positive atmosphere where learners feel they can obviously ask you questions and it can uh, help learners to perhaps take risks with whatever they're learning. And you'll see the benefits of uh, being a motivator as well. Now, there are a number of ways in which you can you can be a motivator, um, just having a, a natural passion, and enthusiasm for your subject specialism. Try to use fun activities such as quizzes, uh, games. OK, I particularly like Kahoot, uh, Menti and Socrative. All of those are free and they help to, to gauge the learner's interest. So learning can be quite competitive. It can be um, it can be fun, engaging. You can get learners to use perhaps their mobile phones. And this is going to really to help them to keep motivated as well. Some other bits of advice is try to avoid repetitive teaching and learning approaches again and again. So perhaps have a, a diary or a teaching planner and you can see what teaching and learning approaches you have used uh, along your your journey okay so try to mix things up a bit so yes perhaps have paired work and group work you could mix things up by showing a video um, talk about a case study any type of um, discussions and open debates is going to really motivate your learners Another key thing as well, if you see that a lesson isn't working, OK, don't try to, to follow it through. Take a pause. Try to adapt your approach as well. So it's not worth um, teaching something where an approach isn't working. Try to mix things up. And you can, of course, ask the group, you know, if, if this isn't working, folks, how can we make a, a change to keep you all motivated and engaged as well? Um, try to use a varied teaching style. So try to promote VARC. So these are activities which uh, involve uh, visual, oral, uh, reading and writing exercises and also kinesthetic, so hands-on exercise as well. So if you can try to promote activities which encompass those, those core learning styles, then you're going to have more learners engaged as well. Um, other key um, advice uh, uh, elements for being a motivator is praise so praise is contagious everyone likes praise okay so do remember to to encourage your learners try not to over praise but don't go over the top but yes please do try to to praise your learners and to chivy them along the way um tell them you know what they've done well and you can celebrate success uh within the teaching room as well um other key um uh, motivator advice is perhaps arrange guest speakers as well to attend uh, your classroom okay perhaps um, guest speakers could be perhaps quite successful uh, career um, uh, advocates of your your area so you know by bringing in a guest speaker that's going to spark some interest and of course questions as well um, and also perhaps another part you could delegate delegate tasks and responsibilities to your learner so you can perhaps make someone perhaps a classroom rep for example and they could be a, a speaker on on the group's behalf as well so those are some ways in which you can um, perhaps become a motivator as a teacher 
Uh, just moving on. Uh, another key role of a teacher is to be a facilitator. And now a facilitator is someone who organizes, monitors and develops opportunities for learners to develop their personal growth through uh, classroom discussions, debates, uh, group work, paired work as well. So in my opinion, a facilitator is someone who takes a step back and challenges the, the group of learners to, to develop their, their independence, their, their confidence, to, to work towards a common goal. So by organizing uh, group work, paired work, uh, presentation tasks, for example, is going to help the learners to promote um, their, their confidence and also the minimum core as well so they're going to uh, listen to to each other within a group setting they're going to uh, develop empathy uh, problem solving skills uh, imagination perhaps working towards a task as well teamwork all of those core values so perhaps um instead of um, communication being one way from a teaching figure, by organizing perhaps small groups, I would say perhaps uh, groups of learners, maximum three to four, um, they can work towards a common task. And that's going to, to let you perhaps take a step back and observe the group dynamics. And it's, of course, it's going to develop their personal skills as well. So try perhaps to, to become a facilitator within your teaching. Um, and that is going to help your learners to to develop those key skills as well. So um, how to be a facilitator within your teaching. Um, so with group work, um, delegate uh, job roles and responsibilities to those class members. Um, be clear on your objective. So the purpose of the, the group work task. Uh, set uh, time uh, bound activities as well. If you wanted to, you could set individual tasks and targets to individual learners um, within uh, classroom discussions and debates. Those, those could be a fantastic starter activity that really get the, uh, the actual um, lesson going. OK, perhaps uh, talking about what have you seen um, in regards to the news within your subject area as well. And that's going to build up a, a really good rapport with with learners. Um, other ways that you can be a facilitator is asking perhaps learners to read aloud um, to, to the class. So instead of you, uh, why not ask your 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 learners to do that? So that is going to to help them to, to build their confidence as well. Um, another key uh, way you can become a facilitator is through peer and self-assessment activities such, such as peer marking or getting learners to give each other feedback as well. And that, of course, is going to develop um, how they, they give feedback to one another as well. Again, it's improved their communication skills. So I'd say um, any opportunity like that, you should certainly uh, go for it. Another key um, role of a teacher is to be a role model. OK, so a teacher who is a role model inspires others to achieve their desired goals. Um, a role model is simply um, a, a teacher who learners look up to. OK, um, a role model should um, demonstrate a positive attitude, a passion for the, for their subject. And of course, a role model should give honest advice and support to learners as well. OK, so uh, a role model um, is of course, um, a supporter, they should be um, providing um, steps towards success for their learners and giving lots of supportive feedback as well. And also a role model is a, is a good representative of their organization. So think about if you're um, if you are a teacher, perhaps within a school or college, you are being a representative of that organization. So always try to show yourself in a positive light, both inside and outside of, of, of a classroom as well. So think back to perhaps your previous teachers or managers you've encountered, perhaps as a learner as well. Um, you know, have you uh, have you thought about them being a role model? OK, so think about your favorite teacher um, and what made them a role model. And perhaps you could model yourself on their skills, their attitudes and how they were within the classroom as well. So that's another part of um, the teaching process is think about um, 
you know, modeling yourself on, on successful teachers that you've encountered as well. And what's made, um, what's made learners really respect them within the classroom. Now, um, a few sort of tips and advice really on, on how to be a role model. It might seem quite obvious, but here are a few sort of uh, pointers. Um, of course, to start your lessons on time. So to be consistent here, I always like to get into my classroom early and set up equipment ready for when learners come into their room. I always like to greet learners, perhaps stand up to say hello, welcome to the classroom and also to be consistent and to promote respect through the classroom ground rules as well. Um, other key um, advice uh, really for being uh, a role model as a teacher is to to demonstrate your confidence as well so confidence and leadership are are crucial so try to be always in control of your classroom and also be consistent as well and reiterate the the ground rules as, as well okay um other other ways you could be a role model is to share resources with colleagues or fellow teachers so if you're really happy with the way that uh, a lesson has gone, perhaps a, a resource has been successful, do share that with your colleagues as well. And they are going to be thankful uh, for, for sharing resources and, and, and being um, a good colleague that way. Um, uh, another thing I think I think is important uh, as well is to have humility as a teacher and admit uh, to mistakes when when teaching. So, of course, mistakes happen in the classroom. Try not to get flustered and just admit when things go wrong. Um, of course, it's always good to have a, a backup or a contingency plan as a teacher. But I think uh, learners will respect you for, for trying to make lessons you know, interesting as well um other things i would say is body language is to be positive to have open body language okay do try to make eye contact with all of your learners um if there's a dress code perhaps um ob obviously dress smartly and fit for purpose um so perhaps have a read up about the dress code for your organization there and to provide honest advice for, for learners. So if they're asking you perhaps questions about um, their career path, all of those things um, do perhaps provide honest advice. Now, if there's a question you can't answer, then do be honest and, and say, and perhaps you could signpost a learner, perhaps to, to someone who might know the answer um, to the question as well. So of course, be honest uh, with your with your teaching practice there. Now we're just going to move on to a planner. Okay, so within the world of of teaching and training, you might of course have to plan your lesson. So this is a key role. Um, you might need to plan your your lessons and also to create a, a scheme of work, which I'll show you just in a moment. But um, teachers need to to really um, have lesson plans and a scheme of work because that is going to to break their qualification down into a beginning, a middle, and also an end as well. So it's very important that you do read your your qualification. Um, the criteria, the syllabus, the specification, and think about how you're going to break your course down and the assessment methods that you're going to use. It's always good to perhaps speak to uh, the awarding body or perhaps a, a manager um, or your organization's senior leadership team, because the, they will, of course, have lesson plans and a scheme of work available um, for you to use as well. So please perhaps do read up on uh, lesson plans, a uh, scheme of work before you embark on your first course. Okay, I always like to have a lesson plan to hand when I when I teach. Um, so here is a lesson plan template. Of course, um, you might have a, a different style of of lesson plan here, but as you can see, it shows you the timings of your your activities, um, the the learner activities, what the learners are going to be doing, um, resources, uh, inclusion, assessment methods, and opportunities for promoting learners' functional skills. So if I were you, if you're new to teaching please do follow um, a lesson plan here another key um, document which is going to help you to become an effective planner is a scheme of work now a scheme of work in my opinion is a working document it's a very much a diary and that's going to show you 
um, the different uh, lessons that are going to be taught across the, the weeks, for example, or months if you're teaching perhaps a, a longer course as well. Now, a scheme of work can be presented on a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet, and it's going to show uh, the different dates and times of your lessons and the activities which are going to be involved as well. So if you're new to teaching, perhaps have a look at a scheme of work, and that's going to help you to, to really show the beginning the middle and also the end of your of your course as well now um just how to be uh, an effective planner in my opinion is to to reach out to your colleagues your uh your uh, awarding body uh managers because they should have um some lesson plans and schemes of work already made and this is going to help you um to to make your job easier you don't have to create something which is brand new you don't have to spend hours and hours planning your lessons if lesson plans are already there okay the same for teaching resources okay so there should be resources perhaps made by the awarding body which you can use for your own uh, teaching as well um other parts of advice i would say is allow yourself time to to plan your lesson so take time away from your your busy schedule to sit down and to to plan your lessons accordingly perhaps have a system in place where you can take time out you can perhaps have a look at the lesson plan and start to plan uh, your lessons to make them fun interesting and engaging but always perhaps lean on your colleagues as well OK, um, you could also review your schemes of work as well to perhaps uh, change dates. And the scheme of work is going to be your your marker for where you are as a teacher. Are you teaching too fast, too slow? Do you need to speed things up? And you can also see key dates within your schemes of work, such as uh, half term, any holiday dates. So you just have to teach to ensure that you're you're filling your course aim an objective there but my advice is to have a look at the awarding body uh, website and also to reach out to colleagues for their schemes of work another key role of a teacher is to be an assessor this is very important because all courses do need to have some form of assessment and this is checking um, that learners have have understood um, your your course content um, and this could be perhaps in the form of an exam a multiple a multiple choice test at the end of um, the course it could be an assignment which is handed in a portfolio of evidence so you are using some type of standards or criteria to make a judgment uh, about the learner whether they have achieved the course aim the objectives or not you might have to of course give them a grade or it might be that you give them a pass um, or a fail or a resubmission and this is something that you would just need to find out about before you embark on your course. You need to find out about the standards or criteria that you are using um, as an assessor to make a judgment on your learner's performance. So please do have a look at perhaps the awarding body website or speak to a manager and to uh, attend standardization uh, training days. And this is going to help you to, to become more of a confident assessor with your teaching. Now, in terms of uh, becoming uh, a confident assessor, there are a number of ways that you can do this, okay? Um, prepare learners fully for their assessment, covering all of their content. You don't want learners to be uh, unfamiliar with their assessment. We don't want to catch learners out or, or spring on them uh, an exam with very short notice. We don't want to do that. So um, prepare learners fully for their assessment. This could be through mock assessments. It could be through uh, any type of practice, a trial runs of a test paper, for example. So do get learners familiar with their assessment. Show learners the assessment criteria. So openly show them the standards that you are going to make a judgment um, on. Um, some learners want to know the highest grade and how to get there. Other learners just want the minimum pass. OK, so do show learners your assessment uh, criteria. Um, try not to uh, catch learners out to so explain the assessment criteria uh, clearly, um, the timings of the assessment, where will 
uh, the assessment take place. Um, I'd say try to to give objective uh, feedback as well and avoid personal opinions when giving feedback. So please stay factual and objective when giving feedback. Get, uh, let learners know that they've passed uh, an assessment straight away and then give them some supportive feedback. So don't let learners uh, be worried. Uh, and, you know, if, if learners are thinking, have I passed? Um, then you, you really need to let learners know that they have passed or if it's a fail, then just say, oh, OK, you haven't met the criteria this time and give them some steps for improving their performance as well. But try to keep your language simple as an assessor and to avoid jargon to, to confuse learners. So try to remain objective and to, to follow the criteria there. To be approachable is another key role of a, of a teacher. An approachable teacher is someone who's warm, friendly, welcoming to learners, and they should be, you know, approachable both inside and outside of the, the lesson as well. So an approachable teacher is someone who is going to help learners um, to develop their confidence and to have the opportunity to speak up if they do have a question during a lesson. Now, approachable teacher has a positive open uh, body language stance. Uh, they maintain eye contact with learners and they show attentiveness when uh, when a learner is uh, speaking to you. OK, have good eye contact, perhaps nods. OK, and let learners know that you are listening uh, to them. OK, now an approachable teacher, of course, has good eye contact, perhaps as an open door policy where perhaps learners can uh, just come uh, early to the, the classroom and, and, and speak to you. Or if they wanted a word outside of the classroom, um, you know, during a lesson, you could um, obviously show that or even mention that within your ground rules. If learners do require perhaps a one to one chat, then that's fine as well. Um, I always say um, having uh, ground rules or a classroom contract is is a good way to demonstrate that you are approachable to say you can speak to me during the lesson and and outside the lesson as well um allow for questions from the group okay so perhaps to reinforce it that no question is it a silly question learners can be open and you know speak their mind about uh the the course of qualification if they need help as well and also my advice is to signpost the learner to other sources of information such as support networks as well so if you can't resolve a question that the learner has point them in the right direction of someone who can support them as well an evaluator that is a classic role of a teacher OK, so after every lesson, try your best to reflect on your strengths and areas for development. So uh, a key role of a teacher is to take some time away to reflect briefly on their, their lesson. OK, and I always think that if lessons don't go to plan, OK, do pick out the strengths, OK, and perhaps learn from those mistakes. If something didn't go to plan, don't worry. Uh, what have you learned from it? It could be the time of day. It could be the, the the mood of the learners that, you know, has an impact on your on your session. You can't help that. But OK, think about the things that went well within your lesson. It's always um, the obvious is to criticize your your own self uh, when when teaching, when it hasn't gone to plan. I've been there. Trust me. But think about the positives as well and try to get into a bit of a system. Perhaps once again, have a diary where you can uh, write down uh, your your thoughts from that lesson but don't get too bogged down in being evaluated try to make um, a decision on what went well what could be improved and move on and try to put that uh, those changes into to practice within your future teaching uh, once again try to be open to feedback from your learners so through learner feedback forms and also a manager as well who could perhaps observe you and you can take on board some feedback there so uh, ways that you can, of course, become an evaluator is by keeping a teaching log or a diary, uh, using uh, learner feedback forms to be observed by a manager or mentor, just openly ask questions. What did they think of the lesson? So just be open and just ask them, oh, what, what did you think of the lesson today, folks? Um, 
you can trial um, new teaching and learning approaches and you could get some feedback on that. Um, you can, of course, gain um, electronic feedback through surveys such as SurveyMonkey as well, getting learners perhaps use their phones to, to give you some feedback. And of course, you can look at uh, learner satisfaction rates. OK, so be open to receiving feedback. And I think that's going to make you much more confident as a teacher or trainer as well. Another key role of a teacher is to be an innovator. So a teacher who is an innovator creates and introduces new teaching methods, activities and resources within their, their teaching. So give new systems approaches a go. If you're, you know, if you've perhaps created a new resource, why not trial it within the, the lesson? So learners will be, you know, really happy for you to, to trial new things. If they go wrong, they go wrong, but you can't, um, you can't be criticized for trialing some new type of teaching resource or uh, a teaching approach. And of course, you know, if it works well, why not, um, you know, develop that? You could um, uh, perhaps show your teaching resource or approach during an inset day or a teacher training day, and your colleagues will be thankful of what you have developed as well, because they will be interested in this new type of teaching and learning approach as well. So being an innovator is uh, trialing and, and, and doing something new. You could create your own resources. Um, TES is a fantastic website for putting your own uh, resource on there. You could, of course, um, once again, uh, attend any school inset days or, or attend any training events as well to trial your resource so perhaps learn resources, new approaches from other teachers. Um, you can, of course, observe other teachers as well. Um, you could see their different um, teaching styles. OK, you could take on board their um, approaches. But my advice is to sign up to any websites, any newsletters, any seminars, um, any teaching societies as well, because there will be teachers across the country um, who are trialing new teaching and learning approaches and resources. And of course, you can use um, those methods for your own teaching practice as well. Another key role is to be a leader. Now, I think this is very important. So a leader is someone who takes control of a class or a situation calmly and communicates with learners the direction of where they're going in terms of the activities for the day or the course. So, of course, it's very important to take on board your learners' thoughts and opinions, but ultimately you are the one who has the final decision, the final outcome. So you do need to have that confidence to say, we are doing this today and we are are going to do this within the certain time frame as well. So don't be swayed too much about the learner's thoughts and opinions, okay? You do have to, of course, teach the aim and objectives of your course. And to do that, you do need to say, we are learning this today, okay? So it's very important to be a leader uh, when you are a teacher and to be in control, not to be too authoritarian, but just to say with confidence, this is what we're going to be learning today and follow through on those actions and objectives as well. So to be a, a leader within your practice, of course, it takes it takes time to be a leader, um, perhaps to attend courses or regular training on leadership. Um, once again, observe your, your colleagues, those who have perhaps a, a strong leadership uh, style as well. Um, my advice is to chair meetings with your colleagues, perhaps to chair a standardization meeting, and that's going to build your confidence as a teacher. You can, of course, record yourself teaching as well, and that's going to help you to see how you communicate and perhaps think about can you make changes to the way that you speak, the way that you convey yourself? Are you too soft? OK, or do you need to, to raise your voice and be more commanding? It's all good experience if you can review video recordings of yourself there um, and also to perhaps deliver training on inset days again. So all of this is going to help you to develop your confidence as a leader within your teaching practice. Wow, um, those are my teaching roles, okay? So there's a lot to go through. Obviously, there are many different roles. Those are my personal top 10. We're just gonna move on to the responsibilities now. As we can see there, we have a list and I'm going to talk through them as well. 
So let's have a look at responsibilities now. I mean, in terms of responsibilities, I always think responsibilities are where you are accountable. You're accountable uh, to your learners. You're accountable to the organization. You're accountable to stakeholders as well. So let's have a look at responsibility number one to meet learning outcomes. So a key responsibility for any teacher is to meet the course objectives and learning outcomes. So it's important that um, as learners, you need to meet the course outcomes and objectives. So when learners are leaving your course, they are fully confident that they've achieved the qualification. They can take their skills with them. They can um, perhaps perform their job role correctly. They're leaving the course with no gaps within their knowledge as well. So the reputation of the organization is crucial here. So you want learners to, to do a good job and you don't want learners to leave with gaps in their knowledge as well. OK, so the key here is to meet the course learning outcomes. So very important that we follow our scheme of work and lesson plans fully uh, to ensure that nothing is missing uh, in terms of a learner's skills or knowledge base. So how to meet learning outcomes. So practice uh, your lesson timings, start lesson promptly. Um, do not let learners leave early. That's very important. So try to, to keep to your lesson timings. Um, follow a lesson plan and do not deviate too much from this plan, okay? So especially if you're teaching a course for the first time, stick to those lesson timings and don't deviate with too much games um, off task activities try to remain focused as well um, and also to arrange with uh, you know a mentor or manager regular meetings so you can discuss your course progress as well um, I always say try to be observed by a mentor as well um, and they can give you feedback on your timings but try your best to meet learning outcomes Another key uh, responsibility is health and safety. So as we can see in that photo there, that's a fantastic um, example of a classroom. Try to have a safe and secure uh, teaching environment where learners feel relaxed, they're ready to learn. There's nothing for them to be worried about. So try to have a safe, supportive um, atmosphere, which is uh, which is free from any trip hazards as well. OK, if learners feel more relaxed, then they're going to feel that they can learn. If they're worried about the classroom environment, then that's going to be an issue and they could be more concerned about the environment than than learning as well. So when you are perhaps going into a new setting, perhaps conduct a risk assessment, uh, find about, out about um, housekeeping um, rules, um, check out um, there's no trailing uh, electrical cables or leads, no trip hazards, ask learners perhaps put their bags underneath a desk. Um, ask your learners as well to take care of the teaching environment. So ask them to, to look after the environment as well and take pride um, in their classroom. Um, check the lighting, make sure it's well ventilated as well and uh, ensure that the classroom can be locked as well. So if you're leaving the classroom and learners a bit, you know, worried about their possessions, make sure that you lock it and or you could ask you know, your learners to be responsible for their possessions there. So those are a few things as well. But of course, with Maslow, if um, the classroom is, is, is focused on health and safety, they will go up the Maslow hierarchy pyramid and they will uh, enjoy their lessons more. OK. Another key responsibility is to meet individual uh, learner needs. OK, so teachers um, who are outstanding teachers, they have a, a conscientious approach to find out how best they can support uh, learners within their lesson. So if a learner has a specific learning need, OK, um, they may have a statement from a previous school or college or uh, within their working world. Um, you can find out about how best they like to learn. So perhaps have, you know, perhaps if, if time allows a one to one meeting with your learners to say, how can I support you? And that will that will make learners really be invested within your teaching. OK, so it's important to, to really to find out 
how you can support your learners. And that is going to be fantastic to hear um, that learners feel that they have a teacher who's invested in them and getting them through the training or qualification as well. Now, there are a, a range of ways that you can do this. Um, you can arrange ILPs. Um, so this could be like one to one review meetings. You could also arrange for a learning support specialist to come into your lessons to perhaps support a learner with an additional need or to set up some one to one catch up meetings or homework classes. Um, you can, of course, discuss targets with learners or goals. Um, you can ask questions which are suited to the learner's needs. Some learners prefer open questions. Some prefer closed questions as well. But trial um, your questions based on perhaps the learner's personality, their individual strengths as well. Um, you could use stretch and challenge activities. So if a learner completes their work, you could give them a stretch and challenge task. And so that's going to help them to, to really foster their skills. And it's making them enjoy their lessons more. So they're not bored they're not sitting there so stretching challenge activities are additional tasks to, to challenge learners and also perhaps have a, a varied style of your your lessons as well so have a have lots of different activities um, and this is going to make your lessons more interested so using the VARC principle again and this is going to help uh, you know uh, tap into different learners uh, learning styles there Another key factor is to promote learners' physical, emotional, and social well-being as well. So as a teacher, you should be mindful about promoting learners' physical, emotional, and social well-being within your lesson. So the activities that you are fostering should help to boost their social skills, confidence, both inside and outside of the lesson and of course if you see a learner not you know acting themselves perhaps ask them is everything okay and you could say i can signpost you someone who might be able to support you as well so just being uh just be conscious of the the learners they their usual self here as well um but there are many ways in which we as teachers can can really help to promote physical emotional and the social well-being of a learner um, try to promote mindfulness activities that is really really popular at the moment um, promote um, such uh, posters such as support networks within your within your class as well um, encourage learners to talk about their feelings as well um, and of course if a learner does disclose something to you don't take on that counselor uh, responsibility because you need to say learner uh, set boundaries as a, as a teacher of course you can signpost learners to support networks or specialist staff as well so as an example you could have posters um, of of charities um, of support networks within your classroom and to say you know what it's okay to talk about your, you know your feelings if you're going through something as well then it's that's fine to do so so as a teacher or a trainer do really be an advocate for those uh, supportive uh, networks as well so just to move on, uh, another key responsibility is to be non-biased as a teacher. Um, so to remain objective, not to have uh, favourite learners and to really support all learners. So they do feel that they are on a level playing field. OK, so you're creating this atmosphere where all learners can uh, they can achieve. They do feel that, you know, a teacher is not being subjective towards one learner and so forth. So try to remain objective and fair with all of your learners not uh not to disadvantage learners in any way or over over uh, advantage some learners in perhaps another way so try to be um, objective here and non-bias now ways that you can do this you can adopt a team approach um, as a teacher um, and there are many buzzwords come on team we can do this together uh, we can we can strive towards our goal so a team approach moves away from this subjectiveness and that's a, a really buzzword within within the world of leadership um other key aspects don't be uh too over friendly with learners um you could also try marking learner work without seeing their their names um of course being objective um I would say follow your standards or criteria and that way you're not using um your own opinions um when it comes to marking of learner work 
Um, and also, I think, try to ask every learner a question within the lesson. So regardless if you have five learners or 30, asking them a question each is going to promote uh, inclusion there. Another key responsibility for a teacher is to meet deadlines and to do your best to stay up to date with your teaching and administration duties. You can be the best teacher in the world, the most dynamic but if your administration um, and meeting deadlines is poor, then this will have an effect on your learners and your colleagues as well. So try to keep to deadlines. Um, it's very important to balance your time with marking duties, attending meetings, um, to attend standardization meetings as well. And um, often you will have free periods as a teacher or trainer where you can focus on your marking. So do you utilize those free periods as well. Now, in terms of meeting deadlines, you can communicate with your colleagues, your mentors about your deadline. So be open about when you will perhaps mark a class's work by many um organizations have like marking policies turnaround time so do read up on those policies and know when you should give uh, feedback to learners by um uh, you could look to have a system or a period um, dedicated to completing admin tasks. You don't have to be a perfectionist with marking of work and therefore attending standardization and meetings can really help you to understand how your your marking duties should be followed. If things are getting on top of you with deadlines and workload, then speak to your uh, manager early on rather than later don't say things are fine they're fine they're fine when they're really not and you are struggling so do open up as a teacher and think about ways you know speak to your manager and they you can discuss ways to to lighten the load with your admin tasks moving on um so a key responsibility of course is to act professionally so it goes hand in hand with being a role model um so of course, you need to act professionally both inside and outside of your your classroom. And just remember, your learners will be looking up to you and they will, of course, perhaps uh, mimic you in terms of the words that you say and all of those things. So you think about, you know, being a role model as well. And of course, by demonstrating professional qualities, you are going to gain the respect from your learners, your managers and your your colleagues as well. OK, so being professional is going to show you in a really good light as a, as a teacher. Now, um, now there are a number of ways for you to be professional as a teacher. So follow your organization's policies, procedures, handbook of how to behave on, on site and also within the classroom. Other ways that you can be professional is to show attentiveness during meetings as well. So to be attentive, to write notes, ask questions, that is really a professional uh, role of a teacher. Um, and do not public publicly criticize your organization. So don't criticize openly um, about, about your organization and what's going wrong. If you do have a problem, perhaps you could speak to the head of department and just raise any concerns in a private manner rather than publicly. And of course, demonstrate professional qualities such as listening, patient and empathy of a teacher as well. So all of those qualities are professional and that is going to, to really bolster your reputation as a teacher. Now, other key responsibilities is to promote a supportive environment within the classroom. Now, this is going to really help learners to open up. It's going to promote a teamwork approach and it's going to create a culture of mutual respect and understanding with your learners. By promoting a supportive atmosphere, it's going to break down uh, barriers. It's going to um, improve perhaps learner attendance. It's going to make learners be more invested with your within your activities as well and once again there are a number of ways that you can promote a supportive environment you can have ground rules which promotes uh respect you can use praise and support with all learners by using initial and diagnostic assessment and ilps this is going to promote a supportive environment because you know about your learners their motivations and their learning styles as well now other ways that you can promote a supportive environment is to be consistent uh, with your standards 
you can be consistent with your behavior approaches, um, the way that you give feedback, um, other ways of being uh, supportive, uh, promoting a supportive environment is to deal with low level disruption in a consistent and sensitive way. OK, we want a harmonious um uh, classroom atmosphere so try to resolve uh, any issues discreetly and make sure that your les lessons have pace a, a key way to do this is to have high expectations of your learners set them challenging tasks set them goals which they have to strive towards and this is going to really help to support that supportive environment where learners are going to be, uh, you know, invested in as well. So my advice is to, to keep um, a, a good set of ground rules, which have been agreed by learners, which they must follow throughout. Another key responsibility is to, to maintain records as well. So over time, um, as a teacher, you need to keep records for internal and external moderation events. Um, you need to keep records for annual meetings and you also need to keep records for, for parents uh, and stakeholder meetings as well. So having an organized approach is key here, whether it's paper based uh, records or electronic data as well. Make sure that these are saved securely, consistently, uh, consistently as well. Make sure that um, any type of data or reports have a signature dates on them it's very very important we do this as teachers okay so do make sure that you have a system in place for filing your records now um to maintain our records as a teacher as well once again make sure that records are kept away securely perhaps with lock and key or they're kept uh, on a, a safe database as well uh, away from the public view uh, you can um, maintain records uh, by attending a standardization meetings. You can share marking. You can, um, of course, be told how long you need to keep records for. OK, um, try to maintain confidentiality of records as well. So it's very important we do save and secure these safely. Um, ask for training on um, internal marking systems and where to save uh, documents to. And of course, use your free time uh, and free periods to to mark work and to store uh, safely as well. OK. Now, um, some of the key responsibilities is to partake within the quality assurance process. So as we can see here in this photo, we have a standardization meeting as well. So that's very important as a responsibility for a teacher is to, to stay current with your with your subject knowledge. And through a standardization meeting, you can find out how your training, how your course is going to be uh, delivered. If you fail to attend or take part within standardization meetings, you could perhaps end up teaching something which is out of date. And this is going to impact on your learners as well. So attending standardization meetings and sharing good practice is a key responsibility for, for any teacher here. Now, within uh, the standardization process, um, in my opinion, it's very good to, to take with you perhaps a pen and pad or the meeting agenda so you can keep a record and make notes about what happens within the standardization meeting. You can take pre-marked uh, learner work and compare notes. You can compare how one teacher marks compared to you. And also you can ask questions during that meeting as well. So my advice is to be active during standardization meeting and not passive as well. OK, so do ask questions about your course or qualification um, if you feel that you need to, to find out some more information. OK, but always take part within standardization uh, events. Wow, we have come full circle within our video. We've looked at 10 roles and 10 responsibilities of a teacher. So please get in contact whether you're interested in level three, the four, the five, 
um, or even QTLS as well. We can have a discussion about that with you, no problem. Now, there are some really good teaching uh, websites out there, teaching job websites, TES Jobs, Read Education, and also gov.uk for the latest uh, teaching alerts and updates and jobs. But if you would like a chat, if you would like any further information about teaching, how to get into it, what it involves, um, please do give us a call or drop us an email and we could answer any questions you might have. But from me, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please stay alert to the next video from Train Aid. Do like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. And we, we hope to see you on one of our courses. Okay, so from the Train Aid HQ, uh, thank you very much for watching, and see you soon.